Welcome to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man. Now, the goal of this was never to be a monologue, but rather a dialogue and encourage you to have dialogues of your own. So I'm privileged to be joined by Academy Award winner, but more importantly, father of three, Matthew McConaughey. But, but Matthew, why are you here? I'll tell you why I'm here, Emmanuel. I'm here to learn, share, listen, understand, uh, here to discuss some common grounds between us, but also expose differences between us. Um, here to have a conversation, yeah. hopefully promote more conversations, and with the end goal being that uh, we take the time we're in now and constructively turn a page in history through some righteous and justifiable change. That is always my goal. Before we get to our own dialogue, I have to address something for y'all, because so many have asked, do I say black people or African American? And the simple and shortest answer is black, because it's not only most accurate, it's also least offensive. Keep in mind, not all black people in America are African. There are Jamaicans, there are Cubans, but also there's some black people that don't identify as African because that heritage got stripped from them during slavery. So just a quick short answer. I know so many of y'all asked that question, but Matthew, let's talk. Well, this is another reason why I'm here. Uh, like your last episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man, uh, you, I watched that and it gave me new context. It gave me some new insight. It made me think of the why not the how, which I think is a lot, a lot of what you're unpacking and hopefully we can unpack today with the why. Um, individually. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling you, I'm big on values and I feel them deteriorating across the board. Um, how, someone like me, how can I do better as a human? How can I do better as a man? How can I do better as a white man? That's powerful. That's how you put me on the spot. I'm gonna be honest with you, because that's what we're here for, to yeah. have uncomfortable conversations. You have to acknowledge that there's a problem yes. so that you can take more ownership for the problem. The first step to acknowledging it is sitting in this chair right here across from a black man and being like, okay, I may not be talking about you, Emmanuel Acho, but I may be talking about people who look like you. Individually, you have to acknowledge implicit bias. You have to acknowledge that you'll see a black man and for whatever reason, you will view them more of a threat than you will a white man probably because society told you to. You have to acknowledge that um, if there are two people with equal resumes, studies show that the person with the white sounding name is twice as likely to get a call back as a person with a black sounding name. You're a very successful man who probably has several people under you. Are you a part of that statistical problem? Mm -hmm. Are you looking at a resume saying, ah, man, nah, they sound a little too hood for me. You know, so mm -hmm. I think individually, we must each fix the problem because I believe that, that individuals, they affect the houses and the houses, they affect the cities and the cities affect the states and the states yes. affect the, the nation, nation and the, the nation, nation affects the, the continents. Yes, exactly. So individually, you have to acknowledge, maybe I do have a bias right. and fix it. Yep. Is Black Lives Matter a banner for now? Yes, but is it a banner that is a bridge do you think to take us to, oh, when we see Black Lives Matter and we understand that and it's all agreed on, then we can wave mm -hmm. the flag of All Lives Matter, but I not think, until. I think it's not until. For example, right now we are facing the world's greatest pandemic since the Spanish flu. We all know that, coronavirus, COVID-19. Right now we're focused on finding a remedy for that illness. We're focused on finding a remedy for that strain mm -hmm. of the flu. That's not to say that cancer doesn't matter. It's not to say that HIV doesn't matter. It's not to say that ALS doesn't matter. All those things still matter. But right now, the coronavirus is killing people. And, and so in the same token, Matthew, that's what I propose is that once we get these black lives that are being ended unjustly, handled by the grace of God, if we can get those handled mm -hmm. through conversations like these, and I hope that y'all at, at, at home are having, then we can be at a point to focus on everything else. But remember, you walked in here with the mask. You walked in here with Clorox. Why? Because there's a virus going on. A specific a one specific too. virus yeah. that is imminently ending lives. And that's the same thing going on in the world. There's a virus. It's just of the mind. Mm -hmm. It's not of uh, the body. Heard. Equality. <laughs> the definition of equality. What equality is and what is equality not? It's been an American issue forever and we continue to work and grow and evolve and debate 
what the definition of equality should be. Is there unilateral equality? There's diverse equality. It's, it's, it's a topic that I don't know that we can answer right now, but I'd love to hear your opinion on it. I do not think that there is such a thing as equality in America. The wake of slavery is still hitting African Americans. When you get on a boat, yeah. whether you're in Lake Austin here, 10 minutes from here, or anywhere in the ocean, if you get on a boat, there is a wake that follows the boat. And although you might not still be driving the boat, mm. there are African Americans getting smacked by the wake left of slavery. Well, Acho, what is that wake? And that's what we talked about. Systemic injustice, poor school systems, uh, voter suppression. There is a wake. And so that's why things aren't equal. Only because there's still a wake from slavery. Don't feel Heard. guilty, just acknowledge. Heard, heard. Ah, <laughs> I heard this term the other day and I'd never heard it before. And I went, what? He talked to this person, he explained it to me. White allergies. White? White allergies that, that by where we were raised and how we were raised in our history uh, growing up, <laughs> there are certain just imported obvious ways that we're prejudiced in ways that, 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 that we don't even understand. We got white allergies yep. and may not even know it. And so I was sitting there, you know, looking at my own life and I sit there and I go, all right, to me. Mm -hmm. Longview High School was over 50% black. I applied to Grambling. I was the first white to ever work at Catfish Station in all blues, black blues bar on 6th Street. I am married to a non-white immigrant. I have black friends all through my life and still do. Mm -hmm. But what prejudices may I have via white allergies that I may not even be aware of? Have, let me ask you this, actually, since you brought it up before I respond. Has this situation in our world or my video brought out any white allergies that you never saw? Did you have any white allergies that were in your blind spots? It exposed ways of looking at things in a way that, oh, maybe I didn't see the other side of the, the coin. As I started off with some of the con context you put things in, even very simple things that are like obvious math yeah. of, yes, Whites and blacks can all have it hard, but blacks, whites have never had it harder because of the color of their skin. Yeah. That's an obvious thing. Yeah. Now, I could, I maybe realize that, but I never, I was maybe look, never looked at that side of the coin yeah. until you brought it up. I'm like, aha, you know, and so, <laughs> so it's a very simple thing. So maybe there's just more that I would say for me, more that I've just, I'm diving deeper into how I'm looking at things. Now I'm looking at myself. How I can how I can learn more, see things from your side more, yeah. see things from the black side more, so I can just under so I can get a four dimensional view here. Because inherently, maybe I had to what some extent I've been living in a way where I didn't quite see all sides Let me say as, I, as clear as I could have. The greatest <laughs> white allergy that we say see played out as black people practically one of the greatest backhanded compliments. Let me tell you what I mean. I went to an affluent high school in Dallas, Texas, St. Mark's, and when I was a kid, they would all say, Acho, you don't even talk like you're black. Or, Acho, you're like an Oreo, black on the outside, white on the inside. Or, you don't even dress like you're black. I didn't realize how offensive that was at the time. It wasn't until I realized, wait a second, you were assuming that black people don't sound educated. You were assuming that to be black, I have to wear a do-rag or a wave cap and be sagging my pants. You are assuming something about black people and I contradict that assumption. Yes. And as a result, I am not black. And so I think white allergies play themselves out practically in mm. black-handed compliments. Get this one. You're so pretty for a black girl. So that's to imply it's, that it's, being black, I shouldn't it's be the, pretty. It's the for the black girl. Yes. Beca for yes. a black man part that becomes yes. the right. allergy you don't, you don't see. Exactly. Wait, you just gave me the backhanded indirect compliment. It was good with you're, you're so pretty or you sound so smart. But then you say for this. I mean, and, 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 and I think that the reason, McConaughey, that it's a white allergy is because white people don't recognize it. Right. I, th those, my, my high school kids, they meant nothing by it. But now all of a sudden it's like, no, that's not a compliment at all. Heard. Some people have white flu, <laughs> all right? Like listen to this quote. A quote came out the other day from a white woman that said none of this stuff would have happened with George Floyd if we just wouldn't have abolished slavery. What? Yeah. What? So 
you hear that and you go, oh, how asinine, what, 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 what decade, century, where, who are you living? Where did that come from? We're not that far removed from slavery, from Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. We're not. So many people are like, it's 2020. Slavery was such a long time ago. The University of Texas athletic football program wasn't integrated until the late 60s. I played at Texas. You're one of the most notable, biggest, uh, most passionate Texas fans. We are not that far removed. It's not as if, so many people have emailed me this week, Makane following, following last week and said, well, maybe this will die off with our ancestors. Maybe this will, it won't. Because where do you think you acquire information? More is caught than is taught. More is caught than is taught. But there's hope because all it takes is a conversation. Heard. Uh, look, finally, I want to ask you, um, what can I do? What's my responsibility? What's your responsibility? Today, tomorrow. People should take the responsibility proactively to say, you know what? Maybe I'm a part of the problem. Maybe I can fix this issue, not just by being not racist, but by being anti-racist. Right. Maybe I can level the playing field and make it a fair fight. Heard. I uh, came across this uh, Langston Hughes poem, Let America Be America Again. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to read uh, um, this one piece that, that stuck out to me that, that seems to halo uh, a lot of what we're talking about. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet, <laughs> and yet must be the land where every man is free. That's powerful. The land that never has been yet. That's the dream of a America. That's the realest thing that I've truly heard because it's acknowledging America, we've never been what we've aspired to be. We can be, but it's going to take this and it's going to take those watching this to imitate this with open hearts, ready to listen, ready to learn and ready to do. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man. Matthew McConaughey. Manuel Acho. We'll see y'all next time.